I won't talk to you later. Before you guys ask, this is a color I mix myself. We're doing a nice wedding set, so we're gonna do a nice natural nude and some white designs for a wedding. I mix this using a medium nude, a pink, and also some clear. I want like a flesh tone nude because it's gonna be a matted set. And I'm using C curve tips right now. For my C curve tips. They're a little bit different, the secret test compared to a lot of them, they're not as thick. I mean, so. I kind of want like a flesh nude looking. And this is like a perfect. So some clear, medium nude, and a little bit of a, a soft pink. I like mixing nudes like that. The clear, they give me that more flesh see-through look. But it still gives me some coverage. Hello. Oh my gosh, I watched a live from um, earlier, from just it randomly popped on my Facebook from like weeks ago, where a client of mine had like, um, she's a hairstylist, so she, she dyes hair, of course, okay? So she got like brown underneath her nails, and there's like no way for me to clip, to get the tint away from the brown. I didn't read the comments, so I just saw the live. People were like, why is her, the bottom of her nails so dirty? And I'm like reading it now, I'm just laughing, because I didn't see the comment when I was doing the live. That was um, cracking me up. Quick question. Do we so, have butterflies? The ones that we can use for like encapsulation? Yeah, it should be in the front as the girls. Uh, they couldn't find it. It should be in that design drawer. Okay. The drawer with all the design stuff? They know where it is. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, I'm just like dying because people are just like, why are your nails so dirty? Because it's, it's dye. It died underneath her fingertips. So I just, you know. I just didn't see the comments, so I couldn't respond, but I just got people see people saying, why is it so dirty under there? Well, now I'm just like crying because people are so worried about the weirdest things when it comes to watching people do nails. I mean, at some point, like, I was like, I was like, I didn't see the comments, but now that I read, I go to read it again, I'm like, oh my goodness. I was just cracking up so hard. <laughs> she has so much dye underneath her because it dyed her like the tip of her fingers. So I put it, I use a clear tip so that it looked just like browner than there, but you know, hairstylists is what they have to deal with. People that do henna's too. Can you imagine if I did someone's nails that had henna on? Why is it so dark brown? <laughs> so I'm using secret tip, gotta make sure I build my, um, you know, apex properly. Remember with C-curb tips, it's, it's curved around, so you gotta make sure that all your sides are nice and even. You don't want it too thick, because if it was too thick, you'll still see it right away, okay? Perth, West Australia, wow. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Hello, Kim. Just tuning in, hello everyone, hello. You must be Cambodian or Laos. Your name is so long. I had a student with that, a long name like that and I couldn't even pronounce her name. But you guys want to make like flesh color acrylic like this, a medium nude. I suggest getting nudes. A lot of people want to mix nudes from scratch. I, I don't I don't recommend doing that. Just get like a nude from a company like a, like, you know, a cheap nude. I, I honestly think just get like a cheap nude. Uh, from some company that really sells really cheap acrylic, a medium nude, and you know, some soft pinks and clears. And you can start mixing your own little bit of a nude acrylic yourself without having to, you know. Sometimes there's certain kind of nudes that you, that just come companies just don't have it. Because there's so many different ways to make nude. So that's how I make my nudes. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would say get chisel. Chisel has a bunch of nudes: dark nudes, light nudes, pinky nudes. Then you can mix them there. And it's quite affordable: ten dollars, eleven dollars for a ten ounce. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Do 
get that nice shape from that C curve. Of course, we're gonna do that apex bead. Place it right where the apex is, nudge it forward, give it a few goes in flush. I almost want to go back into those comments for that old video. I'm just like, hey, it's hair dye. But uh, I'll leave it at that. I like to have some fun with the viewer sometimes. You gotta work in stages when it comes to C curve nails. Unlike the flatter nails, C curve, you have to make sure the curvature is underneath is clean. It's gonna be a lot of work later, guaranteed. A lot of work later when it comes to um, filing, hand filing, building structure. I don't recommend beginners, anybody that doesn't understand application, you have to use C curve tips. They're a little bit more painful because if you do thick application, oh lordy. The nails is gonna look really, really thick, and you don't want that. Make sure you get the size. It requires a lot of attention, TLC, when it comes to C curve tips. So you kind of generally want like that. See that? Just not too crazy. This is about a medium long to long, not a full length length yet. Definitely with secret tips, you gotta definitely make sure you can have control of the powder. And one of the biggest things is distribution of the powder throughout the nail. As in let it dry a little bit first before you start moving it. Because when you start moving it, it's gonna be nice and even. I don't want it too thin here, too thick there. See that, just keeping the powder in the middle. You'll know when it starts to dry, see that? It stopped moving to the sides. That's when you know we start to work the powder down. And as we work it down, it will start to continue to dry. Just like that. Just like that. See that? You have to bring in from the sides also, like the sides, to make sure the sides are all the same thickness. If you want to have a really thick side, oof. You're gonna have a really weird, really real rounded shape. Right, bring the sides. careful with my application because my application really helps me with everything else <clears throat> as in it allows me to limit how much work I have to put with my shaping with my drilling um, everything is nice and smooth cuticle flush who would want more work for yourself right Sure, every aspect of the nail is smooth. If I need more powder anywhere, find it there. Yeah, people who start using secret to sort of way, they run into a big surprise. Oh my god, when nails are so wide, so thick. It takes a lot of. I need some more bottom right here. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. 
Chisel is actually pretty good. Um, pretty pretty affordable. You definitely should try it. I I recommend it. Um, wave gel is what I'm using mainly now. Except sometimes when I do these nudes, I'm gonna be honest with you. <clears throat> at the end of the day, not a lot of companies can make the the nudes. I I'm, I almost want to mix my own collection of nudes. I really like the way I mix my own nudes, but not a lot of companies can do it. So I don't know why. I really want it's a flesh tone nude. You know what I mean? Flesh tone, kind of see through, it's kind of clear like this. And I always have to mix it myself. I've never found anybody with a cover powder nude that, that to my liking was like perfect. Flesh tone nudes are hard to come by. That's just too dark, too pinky. Maybe I do that. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll just. I know I don't want to do any powders. Maybe I'll just work on a nude powder, a flesh tone nude, my own nude collection or something like that. I would. I never wanted a powder for myself, but maybe if I just sit there and mix, 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 get the formula down perfectly. It's probably a little bit runny because of the clear. Anytime you add clear to anything, it's gonna be a little bit more runny because we all know that clear runs more than pigment powder. So be careful how much you mix clear into uh, powders when you do mix. Usually it takes me about maybe less than 30, 40 minutes for the application phase. This is going to be running, so I'm going to hold this a little bit longer. There you go. light touches with the brush guys i see a lot of people just oof, the way you guys hold your brush the angle you gotta work with your brush that's your biggest your biggest 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 downfall you're digging into the acrylic instead of brushing it lightly a lot of times you guys are working like this digging 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 motion yeah nude collection that sounds good huh maybe i'll work on that Just all nude powders. Every nude you can you imagine. I always wanted my own ombre collection, as in my own nude ombre collection. The only reason why I don't want to get into powders is because I don't want to step on anybody's toes, my sponsors, and the companies I work with. But at some point, when I do, it's like my final step. Oof. It's, not, it's beautiful, isn't it? There you guys go, one hand done. Look at this nude. What dare I say? <laughs> beautiful nude. Don't News feel for us. Huh? <laughs> Don't feel How? <laughs> Why? I bumped it. How? trying to take this there's like the, um, some on my finger i'm trying to take it off no don't touch your hand please okay. one more time and we're not doing you any more appointments I'm sorry. i will black i will black miss you i'm sorry there we go thank you
think this nude will go with any skin tone, to be honest, the one I just mixed here. When you think I see this thing matted, this nude matted, ooh. It's to die for. It's still a bit runny, so I'm gonna hold on to it a little bit longer. curve tips when you use color curve and chisel do you have to encapsulate the clear no you don't Eva um, chisel um, you don't have to um, their colors uh, they mix them pretty well it's got core powder um, there's no encapsulation necessary I think the only powders that you have to do that with are Valentino and some other pigmented powder um, Valentino Valentino color pigments you have to encapsulate they don't dry because it's very high pigmented You'll notice a, a powder that's high pigmented or not when you see it doesn't dry and you have to encapsulate. That means it's more pigment than there is acrylic. I'm hoping Valentino would change that soon. I don't know why they would do that. It just takes more time to have to take out the clear and encapsulate everything. I mean, yes, the pigment is good, of course, if you have a high pigmented powder at the end of the day, but you can mix it so that it can dry. There's a lot of good pigmented colors that are able to be achieved like that. You, you can tell pretty much um, by just the quantity they sell it to you at. If they're selling to you at two ounces, you probably don't have to cap it. If they're selling to you at like 0.5 ounces or like one ounce, then you know that it needs to be capped because it's all pigment. It's not acrylic in there. They're not going to sell you two ounces of pigment. It's going to cost too much. They're going to sell you... 0.5 ounces and then you gotta mix it clear into it and a lot of people they don't mind it but I do in the sense I don't want to have to go back through my work with clear it just takes too much time I want everything to be done for me I mean it's 2021 the last thing I had to do I had to mix my own clear into my powder when I buy it and I spend good money for it for me I feel like that's personally for me I don't feel like if I'm spending good money on a premium quality product that's advertised as premium that I have to actually do some extra work to make it work, you know? It should be ready to be there, done for me. It should make my work easier, not harder, if that makes any sense. That's probably the only thing I have issues with Valentino is that I'm paying a premium price where I have to actually do extra work compared to other companies, which makes no sense for me, personally, in my own opinion. I know a lot of people love Valentino, and I, I don't disagree with you with the product. But I just don't agree with the price and the, half the work I have to put into it to make it work for me. And it doesn't match my style, so there's that. Uh, the star thing, I turn it off sometimes. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna revert back to because Facebook 
gave me this uh, these options, but I'm gonna revert back to the original. Um, tonight I'm gonna reset my uh, not reset my account, but like I'm gonna revert back to the original account because the stars things and all the advertisement and stuff like, it runs into the, the it runs into the live, and I really don't care for it. I had it on there for a while just to try it because they asked me to allow it, but. Not to have the other team members joining. I want to be able to revert back to just normal lives. Um, so it's uninterrupted. I don't want you guys to get interrupted while you guys are watching and stuff like that too. I'm going to start doing more YouTube content for that if I wanted the advertisement and stuff like that. I think Facebook Lives, I think I'm going to leave it original. So I use it. I really, I don't even know how to turn it off. When when Facebook allowed it to be turned on, it just turned on. But that it gives an option to turn it off, the stars and stuff like that. But I'm gonna check with the advertisement because I don't really want them to do too much advertising while I'm doing live. You know, I thought it is free for you to watch, but a lot of people don't mind watching, you know, a few seconds of a live or a few minutes to watch the content. But I don't want it to be interrupted. I want to be able to have make sure that my the other team members do lives, they don't get any interruption or they get people, just to, they keep people in, captivated. But I'll look into it tonight. Cause like I said, once my account got to the, where Facebook started implementing all that stuff, they allowed me to, to turn it off, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Tech savvy wise, to how, how to turn it off. Or some kind of form I have to fill out. There's a show. And here's my thumb finger. Oh, I mean, I can I can keep the stars option. That's just for like you know for you guys to donate to the team, and usually that money probably covers the expenses for all their supplies and stuff that I send them. Cause a lot of this, the team members that I have, they have I have to send them products to use. They don't have their own line of brand stuff. So, I really appreciate the stars, but Facebook they kind of really take advantage of that because. They take a lot of the proceeds too, so it's like, I don't see why. I'd rather have other options of support. You can share, share, like the, share, comment into the live. I'd rather prefer that over um, sending the stars and gifts and stuff like that. Cause I've read on, I've read the fine print and then I'm like, wow, they take a lot. Facebook takes a lot of it, it's not even worth it. I ain't trying to make Facebook rich, they're already rich. Oops, I shouldn't have said that on Facebook. <laughs> Whatever, they hear me, they hear me. And I want, and I want them to take proceeds from people's generosity to the team. So maybe I'll set something up other than going through Facebook for people to donate and stuff like that. For the team anyways. Let's send them products and supplies and stuff like that. It'll cover the cost for that. Of course, now we clean our brushes. Remember, the 16 is a big brush. And I use, I use some clear in here. See that, you see any acrylic? Just nudge it forward, so I see that? And nudge it forward, get that acrylic out. Again, team singing samples. Fortunately, my team is chose specifically based off their unique talents. 
I, when I first started doing that, I just had decided, you know, because I don't want everybody to be like, oh, this and that, no. I just pick people that I, I, I know and that they, they do good content, content that's unique to me, even. Let's get a little file here, this file so I don't cut the client. They don't get just samples, they get a lot of stuff, actually. Yeah, I, one of the reasons why is I want to be able to give you guys content from other nail techs also, not just me. They have the same mentality as me, they want to help. So I'll take care of them. More and more of them will start doing it soon. They're a little bit nervous, of course, like everybody else. Sure, they got anyway because I have so much other stuff I want to do. But I'm never gonna stop doing nail lives, that's for sure. But I'm not gonna do as more as frequent as I used to do it because I've been so busy traveling. So someone's gonna take over. I can't believe I've been doing this for a year. Wow. And when I first started doing this. My lives were so crazy, like every day, eight, seven times a day. You wanna see Tino live? Okay, I can do that. I'll set something up, have Tino go live. You guys wanna see Tino live? Okay. <laughs> I will turn off the uh, other stuff. Send me some sense. It's not about how long you do nails. Um, I pick the team based on, on their uniqueness. There's certain things that my team members do that I don't do, like competition nails, or they work with demo hands, or they do forms, sculpture, something about them and it meets their quality. And, and then they have some experience doing like content, live videos and stuff like that. And you don't really get samples. They get like the whole works. I like a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff where I sent them from my acrylic sponsors too also and these people are never seeked it out they just one day I've been noticing them from afar and I message them and they're like wow you don't even know you knew who I was well I do all good things will come to you unknowingly so I never even let them know I just one day reached out to them say hey this is what I've been noticing about you that's what I like what you like to do. And I've been trying to figure out a way how to do this team thing. A lot of them like, am I your ambassador? No, nope, you're not my ambassador. You're a team member, it's different. I don't like the whole ambassador thing. I don't do ambassadorships. I don't want everybody to eat the same table. As an ambassador, I feel like you're kind of eating scraps. Team member, you eat the same table. Some ambassadors have to pay for their own stuff. It's crazy. Don't I don't hate on the ambassadorship program. I just feel like, I just wish it it changed a little bit, so that the people that are actually doing the work content would benefit a little bit more. You know, if that makes any sense. And just like a, a promo code that gives you ten percent, like. Good to be an ambassador. He gets a lot of teamwork, team building. We used to do giveaways during live for sharing or something. No, I don't need giveaways for sharing. People share. If you're here in the live, you support the live, you share the live, it benefits other people. <clears throat> That's the way of supporting the free content. Just imagine you, some, some you, you stumbled on upon this because someone shared. So it helps people. Plus, my content that I produce here are free for everybody to watch. I don't want to do an incentive for shares or something like that. I mean, this is something that you should do. The community is very strong in that sense.
<laughs> Guana sample over there. Unfortunately, you guys are not even allowed to have some of the stuff. It just costs too much to ship over. It probably costs like a couple hundred dollars to ship something over to Guana, I, I believe. Honestly, nowadays with social media, if you want to be part of something, start contributing to it, produce content, people will notice you, you know? I think a lot of times companies like Valentino and the big brands, they look for people that are consistently producing content, short videos of them doing stuff, you know? And you know, great pictures of the nails or something like that. And if that's what it is, they'll look for you and they'll, 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 they'll catch you. And a lot of people that, that I know is that wants to be ambassadors and stuff. They all they want is the free samples. I'm like, you can't think of it that way. That's nothing. That's to be a bonus, you know. Yeah, you get some free stuff, fine. But what, you, what the the ambassadors are, uh, the companies are really looking for is how can you contribute to their team. That's how they find you. You know, they don't find you just because you're sitting there. You're not posting pictures or you're posting tutorials or something like that. It could be random things, you know. I Maybe mean, I should speak on that so let you guys know how to do that. Because I think a lot of people want to be part of a team or an ambassador, but they don't really know how to start. The best way is putting your stuff out there, doing things. A lot of companies notice me because I do live streams, you know? Um, before when I first do, did this, I barely got any viewers. It builds up somewhere. Um, and then also I did like videos on Instagram and stuff like that. And they say, oh, hey, you know, he's always working with products. I want him to use my product. So then they reach out to me. I only think I've ever been an ambassador for one company before I stopped um, doing that. Uh, was I think not Polish was the first company I was ambassador for. After that, I was like, I realized that the ambassadorship program was not for me. I want to eat. I want to eat good, so I got to work harder, you know, create my own dinner table. Then I can invite people to eat the table. Wow, shit, that's nice. A little bit of hand filing. Smooth it out. This design is going to be cute. I think I see it. It's like a white design. But like I said, now that Studios is going to be a communal page. You're going to see a lot of people posing content in here. I get Tino and I get Tino into it. I talked to Tino the last time I, I taught a class with him in um, Denver. He's right down. I was going to show him how to do it. <laughs> you guys will like Tino when he lies. He's very fun. Unlike me. Just kidding. Tino's more of a free spirit. When you see him live, you're going to see, oh, wow. He's very creative. But maybe um, I'll speak to him in Vegas again and set it up for him. When he comes back, he'll, he'll be able to do live on here. Votino Live. You guys have probably never seen that before, ever. You know, only now that I can make that happen. <laughs> the thing is, my page is set up for video content. Some people set their stuff for just a uh, image and posting. My page is all videos, content, stuff you can watch, interact with. The 
but Tino's not going to be doing some of the, I don't know if he's going to be doing his, his like crazy, crazy stuff. I probably should show some, some stuff, but Tino, uh, very unique. His work takes a little bit longer and we'll see. I'll talk to him, see what he wants to do, but he will definitely be doing lives for sure. We got big plans for this page. I've had these plans for years, guys. Actually, for exactly a year, I've been planning how to turn <clears throat> Nail Death Studios page into a almost like almost like a network for nails. And every the nail techs are different channels or different shows. So I want I want these like team members to have their own little shows on here, the schedule for you guys to watch and support. A lot of fun things coming in the future. I'm excited for you guys. Yeah, so, you know, I don't want this, this um, site to be dependent on me, if that makes any sense. In case I'm busy, I want content to be always there. New content. Yes, I can post. You can watch old stuff, but I want new stuff all the time. It's the interaction in the lives that's important. I really like interacting with my viewers. But I would definitely get back to doing the Q&As at night, questions and answering for you guys. That's actually one of my favorite things to do. I've been too busy to do it, but I'm getting back into it at night. After this, I'm probably gonna go through with my e-file. Get my cuticle area and probably smooth out this area where I'm hand filing out a little bit. I wanna go right into design. It's gonna be a two-phase design, be white. It's gonna be a sugaring effect. And the file may seem annoying, but actually it's pretty quick and easy. Good technique to get it because uh, sometimes it's a pain to do it with the e-file. Hand file gets some work done for you ahead of time so you do less work with the e-file. It takes about 15 minutes to hand file both hands. Or else you can do that with the e-file for a little bit longer. The thing about the hand filing is like when you're e-filing, you kind of uh, run to the issue where if you ask them like put too much pressure, you eat into the acrylic and make it uneven. Hand filing, you're not you're not using a mechanical tool, so it's a bit easier for you to get smooth the surface area. See that? Just the base of the nail. You gotta go back through and do the cuticle work anyways. That's what I'm gonna go do right now. I'm using my sharp 501 bit. Zoom in real quick. And I'm gonna do some cuticle work for the XNC. Mm -hmm. I really 
to worry about this top area. The bottom area I already did hand filing. So it's already smooth. I just gotta just smooth out those scratch marks. It should be easy with this file because this is this, this drill bit gives me the easy to hand file. See the cuticle area, how flush it is? Means that I won't have any lifts later on. See that this area just, just runs through and smooth it out. It's already smoothed out by my hand filer. I don't want to put too much ash in here. Later on, I'll use a buffer. And I'll be able to buff it out. You guys go. Nice and smooth. Resistance, you hear like sc screech marks. That means uneven surface. I'm not really putting down too much pressure when I'm drilling. I'm putting light pressure because I don't want to put, I don't want to eat into something I don't. I want to like you know. Sometimes when the drill is running fast, you put down harder pressure. You're gonna eat a chunk out of it, and I have to drill everything down evenly. This gives me the ability to have a nice. C curve shape and also keep my shape make not too wide also. My cuticle area down. So it's pretty much all I needed there, see? Slope effect. Am I too zoomed in? Maybe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm 
from right between the cuticle area and the curly. Hand positioning, angle, really matters here. I'm getting right in between the cuticle area, but I don't want to take up too much of the acrylic either. The moment you take up too much acrylic, you're going to have that big gap. I've seen it. There's like a huge gap. People are probably too scared to flush the acrylic up to the acrylic, to the cuticle area. And that's why you get that gap. Of course, there I'm gonna clean up underneath too. I'm using a tool to clean up underneath. I know. I know you guys hate this process, but it needs to be done. Cuticle work is essential to keep the acrylic sealed in and nice. Very essential. Skip out on this, you're gonna regret it. <laughs> but for some of you guys that are maybe not used to using the this drill yet, I'll show you. Okay, you don't have to use this drill. You can use a um, sanding band also. I'm gonna go right through this real quick, and I'm gonna go through with a sanding band. I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. Finishing up with a sanding band, a lot of people do that. Very very good technique. Because the sanding band is not as sharp, but the sanding band won't be able to get you these uh, cuticle work like this. So you gotta be careful with that. The sanding band will let you be able to smooth out the surface area a little bit more, the corners. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here like that. And I'll go back there with a sanding band later. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. A uh, nice, fine sanding band. under the cuticle area, this is blush. Mm -hmm. You can use a safety bit for this too if you want. Safety bit is going to be a little bit rounder on the edges, so it'll remove a lot more acrylic, so you got to be careful not to go around the cuticles too much, just slightly clean out as much as possible. No, you're not going to get that crisp, crisp cuticle area look, but you'll get close to it and that's all you need, you know? So I'm just going to do the cuticle area. Once I finish this, I'm gonna switch over to a fine sanding band. With a sanding band, I'm gonna go through the whole nail. So it's almost like I'm buffing the nail, but with a sanding band. Fine sanding bed. See that? Oh, you go through the whole nail. 
just so it will smooth out any surfaces. And you can go through really quick with this. It leaves behind a nice smooth, like a less scratch marks than what these the the, the um, hand filer would do. A lot of people go through the cuticle area, you're less informed as cutting the client. Also smoothing out any rough edges that you might have left over. And this is very quick. And this right here is where I use this the most. This area right here. Keeps this area nice and smooth. See that? Smooths it out. And a quick buff, and you have a nice smooth surface for you to do designs and other stuff on. And this is for those that don't want to use the drill a lot. You're still new, you're scared of the metal filer. Use a sanding band. Get yourself used to controlling the drill. It's very important. Once you get that control down, how to hold a client's fingers, repetition, you'll be able to be more comfortable using the drill bits. I promise you. See, no, this, this, this area, instead of buffing, I can just go through like this. I do it in phases. A lot of ways to finish off the nail, you know? Yes, this way takes me about a little bit longer, maybe five, 10 minutes longer, but um, it has its perks. You'll be able to do certain things, break it down in steps. Instead of sitting there with a metal drill that you're not comfortable with, you just do it slightly and then move on to the next step. Lash your hand a little bit, okay? And there you have it. Fairly easy. This is the finisher. A lot of you guys that want that smooth surface, yes, you have to do all this. If you can't do this with your application, you can't do this with the, the, the metal drill bit, or you're scared to, you have to go through sanding band. Uh, Rough it, buffer, hand filer, whatever you gotta do, do it. Cause later on, I need a nice smooth surface to do my design. Luckily, we're using a matte top coat, so that helped me out a little bit. Okay. You see? I can just go through and just crisp up my shape a little bit more. Put the fingers together. Put my sides in a little bit more. The last change, since we broke down the shape, especially with C-curve, gonna make sure you bring the sides out more evenly. It's a curve. It's not a flat surface like those other nails. So I recommend doing this before you buff and have them wash their hands. You never know. It can increase your shape by ever so much. Shaping is so important. That's why I don't recommend C-curve tips for people that are still new. Because the foundation is very important to keep, to keep the C-curve tips, the, the shape the shape, the structure of the shape, anyways. It's not a flat surface, it's a, a curved surface, see that? So that affects the shape also.
I mean, averaging an hour on a set like this is actually pretty dang good, um, especially see curb tips. So I really want to keep everybody under an hour for the set, so you can save yourself some time to do design. I think a lot of you guys are spending a lot of time, a lot of you guys are over three hours, you're spending a lot of time with the design. That's why you need to finish up these sets quicker so you have more time with the design. I'm not telling you to rush the design, but the set itself can be more efficient. It's probably the only advice I can give people that are like around three hour mark. Go back to your basics, see your foundation. This is very quick and easy. Wow. There we go. Buffer. I'm gonna buff real nice and leave also. portion here. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Oh, thanks. Put that away. So there you go. That's the C curve. Long. Max out. Um, I am going to be using some white gel polish. This design is actually hard, but not too hard. It's easier than you think. <sighs> Low battery mode. Twenty percent remaining. That's plenty. I'm gonna clean this off real quick. Put some white gel polish on here. Mm -hmm. We need a detailer brush, of course. And I also need a liner. My liner, got my detailer. Clean it up. This is black last time I used it. Put some gloves on because I have an allergy to chemicals. Even when it comes to polish. So, 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 so. Let me zoom out a little bit for you guys. There you go. Sorry about that. So this is the really, this is really, really a wedding, wedding, wedding design. You can be a bridesmaid, you can be the bride, you can be whatever. This.
Let's see, get the outline out first. It's gonna be a deep French, but a little very low one. I guess we'll see why in a second. It's a double reversal. I'll explain that in a second here. The outline first and I'll fill it in later. And I can use the actual brush itself to fill in the white. I'm trying to do as one coat as possible. This is good enough. This way is good enough. Outline gives me like a border guideline to follow. You know, I mess up, I just go back through my liner and clean it up, but getting very careful with this part. Make sure it's nice and thin. I don't want to lose any of my shape or gel polish. I can use gel art paint for this, but I really don't need to. It's not, it's just for a simple French. You have the guidelines, so you can just be careful around here. Don't worry about it. You can go back through with your liner brush and clean up any spots that you want to and crisp. back through with my liner just clean up all these edges make sure they're nice and smooth good smile line because this brush is kind of long I can actually go around the corners like that give me some nice smile lines it's a wedding nail so you gotta have some smiles people are gonna be crying <laughs> you're gonna be smiling very deep Take your time guys, we're gonna spend an hour on this set just to rush through this part, okay? This part will make or break your set. I see a lot of people run that issue where they try to rush through this part and they're like, ah! It's only the first part. We have the reversal up top.
Okay, before we cure, I'm just gonna flash cure this real quick before I do the other end, in case that one messed up. Don't put it in yet, okay? No, don't put it in yet. I literally said don't put it in yet, and you're like, uh-huh. Let me show I clean up the sides for it. I'm done. <laughs> Don't put it in yet. Okay. Put the machine down. It immediately goes into the machine. Love it. It's tr structural value. Mm -hmm. Comprehension. Yep. Yeah. Check the sides. The side walls in. Okay. And if you can't do with the liner brush, just put polish on and take it off with the uh, like a a French brush or something like that, but. It only takes practice. I just go down from the same edge on each side. Drag the brush over. It's just my outline. Just to give me uh, the look of the smile line. So whenever I go to my, with the brush, I gotta face it and look better. I don't have to be perfect in this part yet. Later on, I can make up for it. You know what? I don't think we should do the top area. Just do the, the French with the flowers on it. You see this one? Yeah. Just, you don't want to outshine the bride too much. Okay. The top area is excessive. It's nice, but having the, the little squirrels on the tip only would be nice. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a combination of that second design you have and the first oh, design. Yeah. Usually white polish, you should be able to paint one coat. Um, if not, then just go back through with another coat. Just be careful. Um, I recommend wave gel. I ran out of wave gel, but wave gel has a really good one coat white polish. This is Anthony Vince is pretty good too, so. I don't like doing too many coats because I don't like um, thickness. I want it too thick. I lose my shape. Later on, I'm gonna do a sugar effect, swirls. I might do rows and swirls, we'll see. What I feel like, what I can fit on here anyway. So after this, I'm gonna check make sure that I like it before I mat it. Once I mat it, that's it, I'm committed. If I need to go back through with some more white, I'll go through with some more white. Now comes the part where my detailer brush will come into play. 
Let's see. I think we made one thin, thin coat of white. Very thin, okay, guys. Just on those that need them. Not every finger needs it. It's easy enough. Yes, I could have just, you know, did white powder and nude powder and cut this, but it wouldn't allow me to be able to do a fill. If a client wanted to fill, they'd have to drill it all off. This allows me to drill off the gel polish for one, and I'll be able to do a fill over the natural powder and do another design. A lot of people will do the, the cutting of the powder. This gives me the ability to do the design over and over. Okay, so after this, took about less than a few minutes here, but it gives me more white, more depth coverage. At the spots, I see these little light areas. Go through, give it some nice definition. But I'm very careful, very wary. Oh, why? You think you have to come to play? It's in hindsight, I should use Gemma Gel Art Paint. Okay, now you finish and this part. If you have to reshape your nail because your polish made you lose the shape, now is the time to do it. Because now you're gonna put the you're gonna put the matte top coat to seal everything in and matte everything. Okay? So right now if you feel like you, you have to reshape, do it now. If I want to reshape I have to take out my hand filer. Just lightly shape. Fine. You know, do it now. Because you don't want to do this after. If you do this after, what happens is you're going to break the seal on the, your, your matte top coat and your polish going to chip. Anytime you want to, you work with gel polish and you feel like you need to reshape and, you know, because you got maybe a little bit too thick here and there. Yes. Clean this off with alcohol. Get the dust off before you add on the other stuff hey, even the tip of the nail oh I got too much polish on the tip of the nail okay this is your time make these changes now or forever hold your peace okay I don't cap my tip of the nail anyway so it doesn't really matter to me I can take simply take some acetone alcohol simply clean it clean it all off all the excess Take my matte top coat out and use my now dead matte top coat. I'm gonna matte this first before I put my next stage of my design on here. So this matte top coat will seal in everything that you file. It's one thin coat, that's all you need. This mat will smooth out anything. Be careful with this mat because 
You don't want to keep pasting it on just one coat because matte top coat breaks down polish. So it can break down this white easily if you keep smearing it on there over and over. I know you guys probably have done designs, but also I know where you put the matte on it, it starts to, to, to drag it and smear it. That will happen. I want to show you guys something, the difference between this hand as a hand file and the other one, okay? Then here. This one I did hand file, but shape not too bad. I only show you guys that earlier, just in case for those of you guys that do run those issues, that's the only time you ever be able to make that to fix it. Cause you don't want to have to put top coat on it and like, oh, I, just, I want to reshape this. The moment you hit that, you hit that up with the hand filer, it's gonna break that steel to that mat or that top coat. Then there's, then your your paw is gonna chip, and flake off. Okay. So do it before you do this face. I implore you. Very thin coats. So now we're gonna do a sugaring effect. Ooh. The first time doing this design, so bear with me. All right. <laughs> Everything's nice and matted. Just gonna see. I'm gonna put away my. I'm gonna take out my detailer brush. So I need to do small little swirls. And I'm gonna use white powder, uh, clear powder. Kind of like little tiny C's next to each other, going different direction. Give it that embossed look. And then we're gonna go like this. powder soap into that and here I'll show you guys one sample first that here and generally that should cure and you will the dust this off and you have this kind of embossed look right there in there. See? 
So now I am going to go through and do the rest of these. I don't know. <laughs> there are people actually want to watch me do. When you do this, actually, you have to use a smaller brush because a longer brush won't be able to give you those little swirls. So I create kind of like C's within C's. You see? Almost kind of like a, a braille design. And for those of you guys that take a little bit longer time, I recommend doing step by step, finger by finger, so that these designs don't blend into each other. I'll put little dots here, kind of ties it in. It's the gel is not here. I already base coat, we already matte top of everything. What this clear powder is gonna do is gonna soak up soak up into that um, gel polish. When you cure it, it's gonna cure right into it. Spam wrist, no thank you. <laughs> not today, Satan, not today. There's a lot of ways you guys can do this. For those of you guys that are really creative, you can create your own little intricate designs in here. But for this one, I think they're just like little tiny swirls in there. Create kind of a texture effect. You can create like almost like a fence or something like that. I don't know how you guys want to do it. Little tiny flowers. Little tiny flowers and then each other, a rose kind of. Little tiny dots in between. It's just with gel polish. Or even little leopard prints. Mmm, see? You can do a little tiny leopard prints. I cure as I go, just in case I mess up. I don't accidentally touch. Let's do a little rose on each other. A little 
leopard prints that look so cute with this design. This shit takes so much time, y'all. But honestly, once you get like the the hang of it, just pretty quick. Little tiny C's in and out, in and out. Dots here and there. Just creates that texture around the flower, the, the French area. This is the one design that if you overthink it, you're gonna mess up. The moment you overthink it and try to make it something that is not supposed to be, like too perfect, you mess up. Don't overthink it, y'all. Very easy to overthink this design. Try to make it more than what it really is. Swirls in and out. Little leopard prints, if you want to call it. I was going to end the live and finish this off, but since people are still want to watch this, I guess I'll finish it off if you guys can see the final set. I guess in a sense, a lot of you guys have spent like almost an hour in here, so you're like, I want to see the finishing product. Okie dokie. Sure thing. I'm kind of glad when they do the top area. Yeah. Looks good. That's all we needed. Mm -hmm. Someone's on with this hand. Definitely need a detailer brush for this. So when you do these little C's within each other, you kind of create a little like kind of like a braille, like a a chain link. And that's what creates this like. Sweet design. You just gotta go around and around. And no, not one design is gonna look the same. In the future, if I had time, I'd probably do like little roses. That'd be nice. Yeah. I could have taken the picture she gave me, like how they did this part, and freestyle the little roses, but that, that would take a little bit more time though. And you want to make sure this is kind of thick too, that's why we're using a detailer brush. If you do this too thin, the, the, the gel powder here, too thin, um, what happens is the uh, this the powder won't absorb into the gel polish, so that's why you use a detailer brush. See how thick I have it. You want to create little thick swirls, so that the acrylic when you put the clear it will absorb to it. So it gives it that texture effect. So you do it too thin, it won't be able to absorb and there'll be no texture effect. 
that would defeat the whole purpose of us doing all this work. See now the acrylic is absorbed into it. So I'll give it kind of a texture effect when I'm finished. Once I dust off all the powder, you'll feel like the matte ray, the matte ray protecting the acrylic, right? So when you dust this off, everything should be pretty nice. Ooh, two fingers left. This reminds me of those, um, those, those like, uh, metal fences that you see, like, in New York and stuff. Where the, the edge just has, like, those twirly... Last... Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do both of them. I know it's, it's freaking gnarly design, though, it takes forever to do. Mm -hmm. Last customer of the day. I think I'm gonna have to take a break before I do my next customer. Mm. Okay, we're finished. Put some pot on here. Let it soak in. Put this away. Put the detailer brush away. I just gotta dust up everything. Can you see? 